this video I'm going to show you how you can create a new set of detail normals and emission maps for the cipher as well as at the same time changing the number of symbols from whatever uh, it is now to whatever you'd like it to be. In this case we have uh, cipher 1 has 18 symbols, cipher 2 has 9. We're going to create one that has 6 symbols uh, just to show what you can do there. Right, inside the uh, padlock 2 or cipher uh, uh, substance painter file you'll see sort of this look this is an exploded view of the um, of the texture and it might start collapsed like this if that's the case just uh, open up this wheel symbol normal that's where we're gonna make the adjustments and um, we're gonna duplicate this and call it I'm actually gonna make this 12 symbols for now I'm also gonna turn off the emissive that's going to be in this lock picking. Just click that to turn that off because currently it's set to a, a, a different value. So we're just going to turn it off. We'll copy this that we paint over it um, later. So now we've got the guideline here. This is kind of a, a general guide to where the um, lines would be if there were 18 symbols. And you can kind of see that here. So we're going to leave that up as we paint. Um, 12 new ones. So I'm going to copy this and make a 12 uh, symbol spacing guide. Yeah, add a black mask for this. You might not need to do this, but in this case I, I do have to because you can't easily divide 18 and 12 together there. So um, I'm going to use a new symbol, go in my brushes, just get this hard, uh, basic hard, and then in the alphas I'm going to use um, this symbol, this triangle, or maybe this arrow would be nice. Uh, and I'm just going to set this to UV on the alignment. That's just a little helpful tip. Um, now when I look at my UV view here, I can see that uh, you know the sizing is a bit big, so I'm just going to lower it down. I'm holding Command on my Mac right near there. And then um, I'm going to come over here and look for the start. Um, and want to make sure that I get the proper setting. So this should be the start right there. This should be the start line for all of these. So I'm just going to stamp these just by clicking right here. So I'm going to quickly do the math in my head and I believe that means every one and a half I have to put one of these. Alright, so now that we've got that I'm going to uh, make these uh, make this clean one first I'm just going to uh, add a black mask to remove the mask that's already there and then I'm going to paint my runes over these now in the end I'm just going to turn these off um, so there the guideline will be turned off but for painting purposes it's much easier to uh, um, have them there and visible as I paint so I'm gonna make this into a special message of unity um, using my runes or see if I can use runes um, in order to do that so let me just grab my runes and see if I can get something that kind of looks like unity all right we'll start with this now uh, the actual position of each symbol doesn't really matter um, we know which one is the middle but uh, in the end um, these are all adjustable inside the editor, so I'm just going to add a couple of these to um, one to each row here. Now I know the code's going to be something that kind of looks like Unity with a moon at the end. I'm going to throw in some random other uh, runes here just to fill in the spaces. You could, of course, uh, leave them blank and it would be uh, blank spaces as well if you want to give your players a little helpful hint, but um, you don't need to do that and you can confuse them with lots of other symbols. Alright, now that I've got those, I'm going to just turn this off and double check. They look about right. Got every spot filled. Um, so now I'm going to copy this over. I can keep the guideline off here. I'm going to go right click and copy mask. And then on my runes one damaged, I'm going to paste into mask. Again, right click. Oh, make sure you've got the mask selected there. And then paste into mask. And I'll replace the black mask with the other mask. Uh, and then on this one, I'm just going to damage it up, which means, uh, you know, remove some of the fine edges. So I'm going to take my, you know, any of these will really work. I'm going to take dirt one, so it's always a good go-to. 
bring down the flow a little bit uh, just to make it so it's less apparent and then we're going to put this uh, on X to make this black instead of white on the grayscale. That means it will remove it so if I do a lot you can see it disappears. So what I'm just going to do is kind of brush this over these a little bit. You can be as precise as you want. Oftentimes I find just a couple of swings of this is sufficient to get a nice grungy look uh, to, the, to the symbol as if they've been uh, old or whatnot. So I'll just kind of do that there. Now we're going to copy this mask as well. Now you can use either one. I like to make the clean and the damage just as an alternate versions for myself. Um, but in this case we're going to just copy the damaged one. And we're going to go down to our emission. Um, and I'm going to just copy this right here. And duplicate the layer. And rename it Runes 3. And to be clear, since we've got a bunch of these, we're going to put 12 in parentheses. And again, right click and paste into mask the one we copied. And now you see the emission right there. Now to export this, we do need to do one slight thing that we're going to undo after exporting. So you can see all the textures are turned off. We really only have our emission and this normal uh, detail that we've painted there. Um, so I'm going to go into the texture set settings and remove the normal map. And then we're going to export that. I'm going to change this location, new folder. Uh, normal detail export 3. I think that's an incorrect name. I need to rename that, but it's fine for now. Uh, the important thing here is that we're going to be exporting the emissive map and the normal map. Um, I've got my custom UD5 uh, set up here. This has the metal rough and all that, uh, but we're going to export. I'm going to export all of these and just delete the ones I don't want in this case. All right, so that's export. And before we do anything else, we need to bring that normal back in there. So I'm just going to undo that last change and then save this file. And now we'll quit and go uh, into our uh, desktop and rename the two texture maps that we're going to keep and then bring them into Unity. So now if you check out these files, you can see we've got the emission map and the detail normal uh, map right there. We're going to bring these into Unity. In this case, I'm actually only going to bring these right over here um, into my project file and then load up Unity and that will import for me. Okay, so now they're in Unity here, I'm going to set this to a normal map. Uh, and for both of these, I'm just going to bring this up to 4K uh, just to be on the safe side. You can always bring those down if you'd like. Um, and then we're going to create our materials. Now I've already got the materials here for, not 10, but 9 spots. Um, and 18 spots. So I'm just going to copy one of these and name this 12 spots. And I'm going to rename all of these as well. So what I'm going to do is uh, click here on the emission, change that to emission 3, and then on the normal map, again, custom uh, normal detail 3. Okay, so now we've got our materials for that. Uh, I'm also going to create a new demo scene for this just so we can see how to set it up inside uh, Unity as well. Now my lock object is already uh, in the scene. I'm just going to change the starting material here. So I do have to set up my uh, textures here. So just real quick, I need to set these up. All right, now that we've got this set here, we do need to make a couple adjustments to the script. Uh, we can ignore the emissive script, but for the cipher itself, um, you know, you want to have the show help boxes checked. These options are do not show up without that because it's possible to ruin, uh, not ruin, but change the, the way the, the cipher works if you adjust these without knowing what you're doing here. So we're going to change the symbol count to 12. That's all we're going to do. Everything else we're going to leave the same. Um, and then we're going to set the solution here. Now if you notice we're already on row 1 and as we move now uh, these are going to be snapping to each set. So I'm going to find the unity. So unity, there we go. Sort of unity. I'm going to save the solution values. It's going to snap back to zero and then I'm going to set the start rotation. Really it, does, it can be anything. Uh, in this case it's not going to snap so it could be kind of in the middle of things. 
Um, now we do have uh, uh, this move to closest spot um, set so they will snap when we start but let's go and save those and then we're going to press play and just see what happens. Alright since we don't have the uh, uh, there we go that's a snap and um, they moved because we don't have the instant option set so now you can see as I'm moving up here um, you know it's snapping to the settings and whatnot um, and we can see up here in the top left how far away I am from the correct um, settings uh, it's just a debug thing for you obviously you'll not necessarily want to show that to your player There we go, that should be right, so let's give it a try, we'll open it, and there we go, so the lock is able to open. If we reset the lock now, we're going to have random uh, ranges set. Your settings will save in the demo scene, um, this just changes it now, but you can always reset the lock and they'll choose new starting locations and new solution as well. Um, so there you go. The other option here is the quick reset. Um, and now if we play that, then this will reset instantly uh, and move to the right settings there, so much faster. All right, there you go. If you have any questions, please let me know. But with this, you can set up your own uh, ciphers with your own symbols that work for your project. Thanks.